Enterprise and Shine Nigeria. It's that time again where we talk about newspaper headlines at Off the Press. Good morning. And joining us in the studio to do a whole lot of justice is our regular Bola Olajade. Good morning, Bola. Good morning. Thanks now, the last 24 hours has been quite interesting, and the newspaper headlines has also been flooded with a whole lot of reports, and I think it's time we kick off, isn't it? Let's take a look at Let's some. start it. Vanguard newspaper now. The biggest headline, war over National Assembly leadership as Ndume. PDP blast Oshomale. And we also have other riders here. Choice of Lawan Bajabiamila, shocking, unconstitutional, says Ali Ndume. Lawan Bajabiamila chosen because they were never in PDP. Election of presiding officers open to all parties, and that's according to the PDP, and don't be like last National Assembly. Buhari Council's new leadership. CBN reduces NPR to 13.5% as MPC calls for rebasing of GDP. Zamfara Ainek withholds certificates of return to governor elected lawmakers and presidential poll tribunal begins hearing on Atiku's petition against Buhari today. Please, most corrupt institution in Nigeria, and that's according to an assessment survey done by Serap. And you will feel, you fell for stomach infrastructure, APC tells Bombay and APC PDP trade wars over. Alleged plot to blackmail judiciary. Quickly, Balao, now, what do you make of the, <laughs> the interesting reports we've had so far looking at how the APC and the PDP have reacted to how they choose the next president of the Senate? Uh, maybe we should extend it Endorsing to the leadership mm. of, of NAS. Um, if, if we go back four years ago, uh, we were at the same junction, and we know what played out. Uh, it wasn't the choice of the party that became both the speaker and the, president, the, and, the uh, and the senator president. And right from that point, for the next four years, uh, people believe largely that that was what accounted for the way the executive and the legislature could not work together. A, a lot of things did not go right with the Eighth Assembly as far as uh, uh, working with the executive mm -hmm. is concerned. Now, if you also remember, around that time, the president was aloof. He didn't want to be involved in anything that has to do with the choosing of leadership and all that stuff. But having gone through that, he doesn't want that this time around. His second so that's why you say the, the party. Horn, but isn't that unconstitutional? You can't have behind closed doors a meeting and decide that, well, we are appointing, not necessarily electing. Is that? It, it can't appoint. The voting will still have to take place on the floor of the, of the House. So whether Oshomole said we are appointing is irrelevant. Mm. When you get to the House, the, 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 the contestants will be nominated, they will be voted for on the floor of the National Assembly. Okay. Well, so President Bari has also told the leadership of the National Assembly as they're kicking activities on that they shouldn't make the make, um, same mistakes as they the, made last time. Yes, yes. as the Eighth um, Assembly. Now we have new actors and much more coming into play. But do you think necessarily we'll see a change in that frosty relationship between the um, executive and the legislative arm of government? Um, there, there, there should be, because this is how it works. There is this. Chinese wall that is meant to be between them, executive, mm. NAS, and also the judiciary. But at the same time, they're supposed to drive the same vision. It's still one government. Mm. If you have a situation in which the leadership of the National Assembly has a different agenda mm. from the executive, it will be a problem. But it is believed that if they are significantly mm. uh, the same party and they share the same agenda and ideas, it will be easier to work. Okay, together. and hopefully they don't make the same mistake and then they see the president of the Senate defect <laughs> one more time. Now, Zamfara Ainek withholds certificate of return to the governor elect of the state as elected. Now, this was expected to have held today, but according to an appellate court, well, that has been suspended and uh, due to the sponsoring of APC candidates. Now, what do you also make of this it's, it's, it's a confusing scenario, uh, but we have to wait till we have to wait it out. The, the, the judgment, uh, the Zanfara state government is saying they are still waiting to receive the actual judgment, mm. and then maybe they will take a next step. It could be to ask the Supreme Court to do some interpretations or, or whatever. But as it is today, everything is in a, in a, in a confused atmosphere as far as Zanfara is concerned. Oh. Incidentally, mm. I don't think it's a state that ought to 
suffer that kind of a thing, considering the fact that it is facing other challenges. Banditry and all that stuff is so prevalent. If you remember, in the month leading up to the election, there were a lot of killings in, in Zamfara. Mm. So you don't want to have a security problem, and then you compound it with political instability. It's, it's, it's not a good combo. Okay. Now, moving on to the Punch newspaper, Senate presidency, PDP warns APC Ndume tackles Oshomale, and tribunal begins hearing on PDP Etiko's petition today, Ekiti, any RTW member to die by hanging for killing colleague, and reps suspend MTF meeting over ministers, Emefile Baru, others absent. Ajumobi cautions on your governor-elect against campaign of calumny. And INEC fixes a demand governorship supplementary poll for Thursday. APC kicks. CBN cuts interest rate to 13.5%, 6 GDP rebasing. Now, looking at the tribunal, uh, which begins today here in the petition of Atiku Abubekar, challenging mm. the victory of President-elect Buhari. Correct. Now, to what extent would you expect that he brings to the fore all of the evidences so that we don't just have another waste of time, if we could use that <laughs> word. Well, the, there, is, there is the law that guides evidence that are acceptable in Nigerian court. So I believe that, and you know, you, you have this team of sons, they know these things, mm -hmm. you know, and they claim to have ready all the evidences that are we Are you prepared for, for adjournment, court. adjournment, adjournment? There is a window of time within mm. which it must be concluded. It's mm. 180 days. Mm. So the law has already fixed that whatever they need to do, they must close within that day and the, the judgment must be, del must be delivered within the 180 days. But do you think this, uh, the article team as well as the PDP would believe in the neutrality of our judicial system, especially knowing the precedents that we've seen so far mm. and how... Uh, things swing in Nigeria. I, I, I think we have to start uh, learning to trust our systems. In mm. a way, systems do not work because if it's in my favor, then it is good. If it is not in my favor, then it is bad. Look at If Oshun. it goes against his favor, Look, wouldn't he cry for That's what he will say. That's what I'm saying. Mm. In Oshun now, you have a, it's the same judiciary, mm. and I've given PDP. Mm. Now it is good. Does it mean if you flip to the other side, then judiciary is bad? No. Mm. We, need, we need to move away from that and be, be able to make judgment based on the fact and on the ground. Mm. And interestingly as well, uh, Governor Ajuma B cautions the governor-elect uh, Mark Inde in Oyo State against campaign of calumny. Now, you remember we had the earlier conversation <laughs> about the uh, speedy awarding of contracts and a whole lot more. But this time around, Ajuma B is saying that, well, focus on developmental issues and just forget about me. My term is almost over. When you come in, you take over you the reins. Thing. Do you it, think it, we're still just attacking personalities here? There are agencies of government mm. that are tasked with investigating things that were improperly done by a previous administration. It's not the duty of the governor. You come in and you deal with it. There are issues, which is why for me, we will need to close out on all this election matter. There are serious issues of state that we need to begin to focus on. Mm. You don't want the governor to come in and is busy about who took what in the previous administration rather than moving us forward. Is that not part of mm. what this nation was com com complaining about with uh, the current president? Mm. Okay, now, CBN also cuts interest rate to 13.5%, 6 GDP rebates, and now we understand that since July 2016, this is the first time that we are seeing the MPR coming down to 13.50%, and, well, the CBN has said out of that meeting comes the necessity to ensure that we continue to see, see the Nigerian economy stabilised. Therefore, we see this cut. Well, I think for me, it's more of testing the waters. Mm. Um, NPR had remained at 14% for 33 months. Mm. That's a whole lot. But it's, it's, about, it's about that time that we test the waters. Mm. Let's reduce it a little bit. Let's see how it ha plays out in the economy. Mm. Uh, naturally, if you reduce NPR, it should make uh, banks to be able to lower their interest rates, then borrowers to be able to access uh, more loans and then maybe it will, it will spur up activities in the economy. Mm. That do, but do, that's, that's the theory of it. Okay. But let's see how it works out. And INEC is also fixing a Dubai governorship supplementary polls for Thursday. That's just tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> lessons learned so far and ensuring that we don't make the same mistakes over and over again. What do you think about how this conduct should hold tomorrow? It, it looks to me like there, there will be need to declare a, a work-free day. Otherwise, <laughs> how will civil service hmm. 
the entire civil servant will not be able to vote. Is that what it means? Or everybody will abandon their, mm. their post and go to queue up to vote, which might not be fair. You know, so I expect that most likely uh, they won't be working at Amawa tomorrow. And following uh, um, court rulings and a whole lot more, sometimes we say, well, possibly the judiciary also has to understand the calculation <laughs> of our political calendar. Okay, now let's take a look at headlines from this day newspaper. Trouble looms as Ndume opposes Lawan's adoption as Senate president. APC threatens disciplinary action against former Senate leader. PDP caucus leave Saraki out of your jostle, says National Assembly leadership open to all legislators. And Adamawa supplementary election holds tomorrow. APC rejects extra poll date. IG laments poor police funding. And we also look well, at to spur wait, economic... Wait a bit. This Ndume's um, mm. comment. Yeah. I'm just wondering why he, everything seems to have come across as strange to him. These same two people being put forward were the same people that were denied in 2015. Mm. Those were the exact candidates of the party for those positions. Mm. Lawan for Senate, Gwajabi Amila for mm. Speaker. Mm. And if you ask me, it just appears fair enough that the same people, and like, like one of the people I said, they've never been to the other party. Mm. So it, it seems as if we're saying you could be trusted a little bit more uh, than people who have been here and there. Well, politics like is just like a game of football. You never can tell what would happen within a split minute. Right. You never can tell. Mm. You never can tell. But, okay. but the players also, are, are, sometimes they can tell. Mm. Okay. Now, um, we also have to spur economic growth. CBN cuts interest rate to 13.5% and Zamfara INEX suspends certificate presentation to Governor mm. Assembly members elect. Now, looking at IG lamenting poor police funding, Serap has also come up with a report in their assessment survey saying that, well, this uh, institution is the most corrupt in Nigeria based on their assessment. Consistently, they've, uh, they've led in that, uh, mm. in that area as an institution. It's an irony that an institution that is meant to check corruption is a key institution in the fight against corruption. Hmm. It is now said to be the most corrupt institution. But under in, this in new leadership of um, our new IGP, what do you expect to be done differently? Uh, leadership is very important, but there, I, I still believe there are a lot of structural issues. One of it is hmm. what he mentioned there, funding. funding. It says underfunding. Yes. But to what extent are we even seeing the funds being released? How many people have you met who desire to be a policeman? Oh, well, that's not their natural calling. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that tells you mm. why, why, why one of the main problems that we have. People must desire to be there. Some would now question, right from the very beginning, mm. with the acting IGP coming into office, we saw how much was released for the election and with security and a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. To what extent have we had uh, convincing the dogs. information <laughs> or figures to show that with the funds you provided, you were able to successfully execute X, Y, Z, and you're asking for more, mm, what they, sort of uh, body language We, we is have that? institutions of state that are charged with this duty. There is the office of the Auditor General. There are the, you see, it's public fund. Anywhere you disburse public fund, these institutions can actually tell the public what mm. happened, what was done properly, what was not done properly. Okay. You know, I, I think we just need to be able to use those institutions a little bit more. Mm. To, to deliver on why they were even so. Okay, and the nation newspaper, Ajumavi, to mark in stop your bitterness, reverse PDP, AAC, row over alleged 3 billion Naira offer. Afrex, Afrex and Bank invest 1 billion dollars in EPZ. New tax culture will change the economy, and that's according to President Buhari. Early, early uh, Eagles goal stops fairers and six year old boys held in Ibadan. And President Buhari, APC chiefs, endorsed Lawan for Senate president. And Khalid's attributes could give magistrates debt to unpaid salaries. Unpaid salary? CBN <laughs> slashes interest rate to 13.5%. You just saw there, unpaid salaries. Why will a colleague die for that reason? Well, if you can't meet your needs, you can't pay your bills, you can't take care of your health, you can't feed your, properly, your family properly, anything can happen. We have details of that in page 43, but we've also seen what played out with the uh, former workers of Nigeria Airways as well. So many died and some couldn't even just treat malaria and it turned out even much worse. The question that comes yeah. to my mind is, 
if people were not paid salary when it was 18,000 and um, they died in the course of that, mm. what has changed that will make that state pay 30,000? Well, this 000? is the state's magistrate and then deputy chief registrar that we're talking about. You know, so those are even very, those are senior people mm. uh, in, in, in the civil service right there. So at 18,000, we have this problem. At 30,000, what will happen? Mm. Okay. Those are serious questions. And okay. Rivers PDP AAC row over alleged 3 billion Naira offer. Who do we believe this time around? Because once again, we have the blame finger. Is I was offered, the governorship candidate says he was offered 3 billion Naira to step down and just take a back seat. And others have said, well, Governor Wike won the election. Why does he need to bribe you? And if he would even bribe you, do you understand how much 3 billion Naira is? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an so, interesting thing. I, I, I don't trust politicians. Um, there's none of them that is believable as far as I'm concerned. In this game, in the reverse issue, we know the true two parties. Forget about all the other pawns that are uh, on, the, on the chessboard. You have Wiki on one side, you have Amici on the other side. Who is AAC? Have you heard of AAC before now? Mm. That's Amici. Mm. So whatever they are doing are just intrigues and games, political games within, within themselves out there. Mm. You know. And it, it's never about the people. That's what saddens me. This is about the control of the cookie jar. Mm. It, it's nothing about, about service or development or the people of River State. And President Buari also here says that new tax culture would change the economy. He's trying to sense it. says there's a need for stronger sensitization and Nigerians coming out to say, well, we are going to pay our tax because then we'll see Nigeria take the new face that we're all looking out for. Sensitization but to, but is to not enough. to what extent, again, do we see <laughs> the funds being taken used? Um, I think the nation has come to that juncture. power. Everything you can think about. We have come to that junction where the nation has suddenly realized that we are very poor on revenues. Okay. Extremely poor as okay. a country on revenues. Okay. Okay. So we must begin okay. to do something. But quickly, well now, before I let you go, I just want your last reaction now. President Buhari says it's going to come hard or all the necessary authorities will come hard on those who fault when we talk about um, building co construction in the country because of the recent collapses here and there. But this is a president that has been in office in the last four years. And don't you think we're just having this fire brigade approach one more time and it's just lip service saying, I would do X, Y, Z. I'm also not sure it's within a sport you to do something. I think those problems are local. When you want to do an approval to build in Lagos, do you go to Abuja? It's no. the state government. It's the state government. <laughs> so it's the state government that should drive the process, not even him. All those ones are just do go to rain cheese. Just, just talking grammar. Just talking grammar. Well, yeah. thank you very much for speaking with us. We've had our regular right here on Off the Press at Plus TV Africa. Well, now, Onojade, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. And thank hopefully, you for everybody having goes and uh, visits their newspaper stands and then get abreast with all of the happenings right here in Nigeria. When we come back, we'll be talking about sports. Don't go anywhere. Still talking newspaper headlines right here on Plus TV Africa's Off the Press. And this time around, I'm being joined by Samson Oloyede. Good morning, and it's time morning, to talk baby. some nice sports. Now, interestingly, let's start off yeah. with complete sports. One of the biggest stories Nigeria won, Egypt zero. Yep. Onachu makes history in Eagles win, and Messi covers his new phone in 24 karat gold. Interesting reports there. And Omero Keen on against day. Madrid deny Mbappe reports. Ihenacho gets seven games to fight for Leicester future. Under 23, Eagles to play Sudan and Efe Ajuba des Anthony Joshua. Osime, my best is yet to come. Barca I Rashford too, and Griezmann fed up of Barcelona rumors and Pogba is not for sale at any price. Let's start with the biggest story in Nigeria, 1 nil against nailed. Egypt. Were yeah. you impressed yesterday? I was impressed. I was impressed because um, mm. the result was good and um, more importantly was the performance. Mm. And um, Paul Onoachu, you know, scoring the second fastest national goal. Impressive, you know, right? It's quite impressive. That's history. But more importantly is mm. 
you know, his performance on the night. You know, it was quite impressive. I think he brings a whole lot of dynamics into the Eagles' setup because he's very tall, so mm -hmm. he provides you the aerial threat you need mm -hmm. going forward in terms of set pieces. And more importantly, is in terms of um, the play, you know, he can hold up play and, um, you know, link up with players just playing off his shoulders. More importantly, is for a player of his size and, um, you know, physique, he has the ability to take on defenders, and that's mm -hmm. something very impressive. You don't see that too often with players of his size. They tend to hold the ball and wait for support from the flanks. I wish I had such. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Osimo, my best is yet to come. Uh, do you think his best is yet to come? Definitely. He's a young lad. He's still mm. going to bang in the goals. You know, He's still going to get um, his time. It's just, um, in quote, unfortunate for him that at this point in time, we've got Odiyan Gallo, who is banging in the goals. Mm. Odiyan Gallo scored seven goals during the African Cup of Nations qualifier, more than any player on the continent of Africa. So in terms of that particular position, you know, you get the feeling that Odion Gallo is still going to get a nod ahead of Osime. Mm. But Osime has lots of years ahead of him. He has everything that, you know, that it takes to be the number one striker in Nigeria. And, and um, beyond just the talk, definitely. he has to deliver, definitely. Yep. And here, Nacho gets seven games to fight for Leicester future as well. It's, 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 um, it's a sad one for him because mm. when he was at Manchester City, you understand that the array of talent at City's disposal mm. was way too much, you know, compare, when you compare um, his quality to theirs, so he had to move. Moving to Leicester City, he expected him to get playing time and all. And the truth of the matter is, Leicester have been fair enough to him in terms mm. of playing time. He just hasn't, um, you know, capitalised on those uh, moments to really stamp his authority and make his own name for, for you know, on Leicester City. And then, you really look at it, Jamie Vardy is, not de is definitely not going to get ahead of But do you think he's an I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the state of mind is. You know, in terms of um, you, you watch certain games they plays and you feel like he, he, he can't do more and should do mm. more. You know, so um, it's 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 yet to be seen. I think at, at the summer Leicester City will dispose him really. Okay. Now as we are wrapping up conversation, let's look at. Pogba not for sale at any price, and United continues to resist mm -hmm. despite uh, Madrid's transfer pursuit. When they signed him for nine million pounds, the aim was to build the team around him. You mm. know, to, to usher in a new generation of young lads. You know, who make things happen for United. And right now, you look at the players around, the likes of Lingard, Rashford, mm. Martial. These are young players. You know. They can benefit from Pogba. Pogba is also young, but he's got the experience, you know, having played for Juventus mm. and won so many titles in there and then coming back to United. If United wants to get things going, you know, it needs to be a part of it. And mm, mm, he also mm, needs yeah. to deliver on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. That's that's his challenge. It's not consistent enough. And um, the issue of Madrid denying Mbappe reports, we hear these things over and mm. over again. But the truth of the matter is, we know quite well that they will definitely make a move, you know, this summer. It's mm. yet to be seen if, you know, PSG will be ready to do game. But it's all about the money. It's all about the financial muscle. Real Madrid has mm. got it. Do we have any games for today? Well, not nothing, um, you know, mm. fanciful for now. Thank you very much for your time. We've been speaking with our sports correspondent, talking sports and all of the big stories from Complete Sports. Thank you very much, Sam Sain. Thank you. And this is where the cookie crumbles on today's edition of Off the Press. Please definitely remember to get abreast with all of the news making the headlines and we'll definitely bring you much more as other conversations continue right here on Plus TV Africa. Many thanks for watching.